steer and wild little folk. No, no, I did not have the strength to go to the DAR. In fact, I did not have the courage. I wanted to find a hole in the ground and hide myself in it forever. Well, that's why you're here, in the hole in the wall in Nevada. Why, why, <laughs> how old are you, Laura? I am 21 years old, <laughs> and we're here to get some cattle. I thought that you were an adult. It seems that I was mistaken. Indeed you were. Now you got a glass of shit shooter. What are we gonna do? What is going to become of us? What is the future? Well, the future is we're going to head through that cow, that steer, and, well, that's just like a fat woman who's going to be in field, but I guess we can steer her up. <laughs> I'll be all right with this. You coming? Uh, I'm just bewildered by life. Well, get up, bewildered. There is nothing more dangerous than a calf. <laughs> As you know, I was suspected to be inducted into my office at the DAR this afternoon. Well, you made the right choice, Mother. <laughs> what? I stopped off at the Republicans, with an M, Business College to speak to your teachers about having a cold and ask them what progress they thought you were making down there. Well, them Republicans. <laughs> However you said it. They're wild people, almost as wild as the calves. Those calves are bloodthirsty little monsters. They will keep you get close to my finger on see. <laughs> I went to the typing instructor and introduced myself as your mother. She didn't know who you were. Sweetfield, she said. We don't have any such student enrolled at the school. I assured her she did, that you were going to be in class since early January. I wonder, she said, if you can be talking about that terribly shy little girl who dropped out of school after only a few days attendance. No, I said. Laura, my daughter, has been going to school every day for the past six weeks. Excuse me, she said. She took the attendance book out, and there was your name unmistakably printed in all the days you were absent until they decided that you had dropped out of school. I still said, no, no, there must have been some mistake. There must have been some mix-up in the records. And she said, no, I remember perfectly well now. Her hands shook so that she, she couldn't hit the right keys. The first time we gave a speed test, she broke down completely and was sick at the stomach and almost had to be carried out into the washroom. After that morning, she never showed up anymore. We phoned that house, but never got an answer. All this work at the famous bar, I suppose, demonstrating those old life of so weak. I could barely keep both of my feet. I had to sit down while they got home and walk the dog. Upon the 
grudging paranoia of sister's husband or brother's wife stuck away in some little mousetrap of a room, encouraged by one in-law to sit another like a bird-like woman without any nest, eating the crust of humility all of their life. Is that the future that we've mapped out for ourselves? I swear that's the only alternative I can think of. It isn't the very pleasant alternative, is it? Of course, some girls do marry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm pretty sure all the cats killed themselves back then. <laughs> <laughs> Haven't you ever liked some boy? Pardon? Haven't you ever liked some boy? Uh, out here on the, on the open plains, you get to like it, fellas. And it's kind of frowned upon. Can you give me this picture? <laughs> he, he's Ledger and Jake Gillen all kind of made it. <laughs> oh, a high school boy. <laughs> well, Mama, let's not fight. We killed the livestock. The what? Livestock. He must have had a jolly disposition. Not anymore. You killed him. <laughs> 